What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 on UTM. And this is a fix over the VMware Fusion version and that allows you to uh, scale your resolution, your screen resolution and everything like that. So let's jump into it. So for starters, there's a few things that you're going to need to do first before you even get any of this started. And the first one here is going to brew.sh and putting it in your address bar. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit this clipboard icon right here. This allows you to install homebrew on your Mac or Linux machine and you just click that and it checks it off it means it copied to clipboard the next thing i want to do is look for a terminal i already have it open right now on my own computer uh, and then you just kind of what you're going to want to do is just going to simply hit command v to paste that thing you typed in for installing homebrew so just hit ok uh, paste and then hit return wait for it to do its thing it's going to tell you to type in your password but it won't show you that you're typing in anything but i will tell you it still works so if I type in my password, hit enter. Oops, I got it wrong. There we go. So you see it says the script will install these things for homebrew. You want to hit return to enter to continue it. And then it's going to go ahead and install homebrew. Um, you see that for me, homebrew is already installed. So this is what it shows. Uh, but this is still what it's going to show regardless. Next thing you're going to want to do, it says run these two commands right here um, to add homebrew to your path. So you just highlight that, hit command C to copy, and then command V to paste, hit enter, and that's it. That's all you really have to do from here on. The next thing you're going to want to do is you want to install Kimu or Quimu. Um, and to do that, now that you have homebrew installed, all you're going to type in is brew install Q-E-M-U, and I have a blog post that I'll put in the description box so you guys can just follow that exactly and even highlight and copy everything that you see on this screen here. Just hit enter. Um, for me, I already have uh, Q-E-M-U opened up already, so this is what it's gonna show, but for you, you'll just let it do its thing, give it a few minutes and install uh, Q-E-M-U, and then that is it. Now that is the back end stuff that you have uh, installed to move forward. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is go back to your web browser and you're going to want to hopefully have a Windows Insider account. All that requires is having a Microsoft account and signing up for the Windows Insider program. So I can just type in Insider or rather, you know what? Windows 11 ARM. I've already started typing it in. And of course, this will all be in the description box so you guys don't have to think and type in that whole thing or search for it. Let the page load. It's going to tell me to log in. So I'll go ahead and log in and jump back into the screen. So you can see that now that I am logged in, all you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click this right here. Whatever the recent version of Windows 11 on ARM is, this is what you're going to want to download. Currently is 22499. So click that, download that. It'll give you a VHDX file. And what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to convert that VHDX file into a QCAL2 file for use in UTM. Another thing that you're going to need, obviously, is UTM. So all you're going to want to do is just type in UTM um, in Google search. And then all you're going to want to do is when you get there, obviously, I couldn't get there directly. You're on this page. This is their home page. You just hit download and save it somewhere that you'll know where all the files are going to be at. I have it in my downloads folder. Um, just hit this. If you download it on the Mac App Store, what it does is it actually charges you money. So it charges you about 10 bucks for UTM. It's much more streamlined, but if you want to pay 10 bucks, I mean, you can go for it, but uh, it's a free software. It just costs extra if you, it costs money if you want to get on the Mac App Store. So then the other thing you want to do is then you want to hit support and you want to go down here and it says here, uh, Spice Guest Tool. Spice Guest Tool is essentially is your VMware tools for UTM. You're going to want to download the most recent Spice Guest Tools. So just click this button here, download Spice Guest Tools, save it probably in the same area as all the other things that you've saved. And then that should be about it of what you need to really get this thing set up. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to copy the following command into your terminal program that has opened up and then make a space. In fact, there you go. You got a space. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to locate uh, where exactly you have that VHDX file that you downloaded from Microsoft. In my case, I have it in this folder right here. So all you want to do is locate it in Finder, click it, 
and just drag it into your terminal. It'll automatically make sure everything is together. And then what you're going to want to do if there's no space like there is not for me, you're just going to want to just hold your back arrow key and go all the way back till you have a space. And then next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do that again. So you're going to want to simply just click it, drag it in. Now I have a space right there and then just hit forward and then hit back. And then the last thing you're going to want to do to finish the conversion is you're going to want to erase the VHDX and type in QCal2. Again, all this stuff will be in the blog post that I created. And then all you're going to want to do at this point is just hit enter. And then once this thing is complete, you will see that you have a new file inside your wherever you saved it to the same area as your VHDX file. And that will be your new image for your QCal2 that you'll use as well in UTM. So just let it finish and then come back here. All right, so next step you're gonna to wanna to do is pretty much you're done with terminal at this point. So you can just exit out of that and your browser and everything like that. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is simply look locate wherever you have that utm.dmg file. Uh, all you'll do is double click it and then you'll see it pop up right here. It'll ask you if you wanna accept uh, something that has been downloaded from the internet, you're just gonna hit yes. So let me go ahead and do that. And then you see right here, I have some machines that I was testing on already for it. But right here, this is the main screen of UTM, aside from these testing things that I've done. And so what you're going to want to do is you just hit this plus button up here. And then you're going to want to start from scratch. And then name it whatever you want. Uh, Win 11 final is what I'll call it because I've made Windows 11 virtual machines like a thousand times. Then for the style, this is just the icon style. You can change it to operating system for ease of mind of looking at it. And ironically, they actually do have the new Microsoft logo on there. So you can just click that. Next thing up, you're going to want to go to system tab, go to architecture, go all the way up, it says ARM64, click that. And then next thing you're going to want to do is you see under system, uh, I had better success going to Kimu 5.2. Um, you might have better success elsewhere, but this is what I was able to get it to work every time. So then the next thing is you just want to change the amount of memory you have. I feel like at this point, whatever amount of memory you have, if you have 16 gigs of memory, put eight. If you have eight gigs, gigs of memory, like I do put four. So basically 4096 for four gigabytes of Ram. And if you have more than that, by all means, add more. It'll just make it smoother. The next step is show advanced settings. You can look through, it says for CPU, you can just change that, change it over to default. And then there's not really anything else you need to change on the system tab, but don't exit out yet. Next thing you're going to want to do is just look here. Everything is good. Drives. Drives is, this is the important part right here. So what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to import drive. And then next thing is locate wherever you saved it, in which case I saved it here in my VM folder. This is the QCal2 file that we just created. And then you just hit open. It's going to make it a vert.io. You don't want that. You want it to be a NVMe file. And then another thing you're going to want to do is create a new drive, and that is a removable drive. Hit create. Take a look at display, looking through. Uh, you can choose to be GPU accelerated or not. Uh, this current M1 Mac that I have, the Mac Mini, is GPU accelerated with its obviously its architecture. Keep going through. You'll see a bunch of other things here. Everything else is good. This clipboard sharing will be working in a second once we get Spice Guest tools working. And then you're done with that. Final thing right here, it's Win 11 final for me. You're going to see the CD DVD drive, that removable drive right there. That's where you're going to mount your Spice Guest tools.iso. So just hit browse, locate wherever you saved it. For me, it's right here. Just hit open and then hit mount. And then cross your fingers and pray that this thing works. You got to give it some time. Um, to fully boot up. So let's see what happens. And then once all those shenanigans that you just saw time-lapsed for me uh, is complete, 
you'll see the out of box experience. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is that your mouse does not actually seem to work through it. All you're going to want to do is hit control option to get your mouse to be inside the virtual machine. And now you see my mouse is active. Just hit next or hit yes rather and just go through and set up your computer like normal. And you can skip the secondary keyboard layout. And then it's going to ask about the internet. Right now, all you're going to want to do is hit I don't have internet and it'll ask you again. If you want to connect now, just say you want to be connected with limited setup or continue with limited setup and then accept the license agreement. And then type in your name. I'm going to just type in next. And then you don't actually need a password for this. So hit next from that. And then it's going to ask you about privacy settings and things like that. Um, I'll just turn off uh, optional just because I don't I don't actually want that and then hit next and it's going to continue to ask you about more things than optional inking I'll hit nope and hit next and it's going to actually go through everything so just scroll to the bottom finally and hit accept and then pray again let it finish its initial setup process for your user account and then you should be hopefully at the desktop screen And then finally, finally, you should be at this screen right here, which is the Windows 11 desktop. You see some things are still loading. It's a little slow for me just because I only gave it four gigabytes of RAM because I only have eight for a max. Um, so the next thing you're going to want to do is just go into settings, honestly. Go into settings and go to display. And you see that right now you cannot actually change the display resolution, but you do have that Spice Guest Tools that you mounted so all you have to do is go to the file explorer see the cd drive and then just double click on the spice guest tools let it install and now that it's finished it is on the computer set up ready to go that is pretty much like vmware tools um, for your computer the next thing you want to do is go back to that setting screen uh, you'll see this you'll be under display right here and then you want to show it only on one which will resize the whole thing and keep changes. And I'm actually, what I'm gonna do so I can show you guys better is I'm gonna move this thing to the middle and come back in. And now you see right here, you can now see the resolution. This is something in my previous video you cannot do. See the resolution, you can finally change it. Um, I can change it all the way up for some reason to a 5K resolution. In this video purposes, I'm not even gonna do 1080 because it won't fit fully in my screen. So you guys won't be able to see it correctly. Um, however, I will just go one below to maybe 1800 and I'll keep changes. And now you'll see on my screen that if I drag or if I try to rather drag this to fit, there you go. It's much bigger. And even the settings right here that you see looks kind of weird. Uh, you can actually just resize it. It's kind of janky, but you can resize it. There we go. Now you see the settings working perfectly just like that. So, so far, so good. Now, the last thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check on the internet because that is an important thing that a lot of us just uh, need is we need we need our internet. We need to be able to watch our videos and stuff. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just simply just hit your start button and uh, you can either just go to edge and you see edge is trying to open up right there. So just let it do its thing. It's going to try to set up everything. There we go. Edge is edge is nice and open. Complete setup. Uh, confirm. Continue without signing in. It's going to it should tell me that Internet does not work. We'll see if that happens. And then there's another little funky little bug um, in this thing. And that will before we even go into edge, we're going to have to restart our machine. And now that you have restarted, everything should be working perfectly fine at this point. Now, the only thing that will be missing is actually the ability to have the Microsoft store on there. You can see that it doesn't exist for whatever reason. I have no idea why. Maybe someone of you, someone of you will be able to answer that for me. But now if you go to Edge and you try to go to say office.com right here, you'll see that office.com loads and everything loads just like that. And if you, let's say you want to open up Engadget as for your consumption needs, you can see that just like this, boom, and gadget loads up and it works like normal. So that 
that in a nutshell is it for this tutorial i told you it's not for the faint of heart but if you can do it and you can get through it you can now have windows 11 running and it does have clipboard support so if you don't know what that means up here right now i have engadget's url i'll hit backspace um, or delete rather on the apple keyboard and what i'm going to do is to release my mouse cursor by pressing control option and then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to just say you know what let me use, uh, let's say I was doing a test here. Let's say I want to just type in this. So I'll hit command C to copy this right here. And then I'll come back into my virtual machine. Let me make sure that it is fully in there. And then now what should happen is if I hit control V, not command V, but control V, you see that uh, 22483.qcal2 is now added into uh, my virtual machine. So it does have clipboard support. And just like that, a lot of your answers or a lot of your questions have been answered from all 100 comments and 35,000 views of the previous one on this one. It's an easier, in a way, method if you can do it correctly. Like the first time, it's an easier method. If it messes up for whatever reason on the initial boot up sequence, um, I highly recommend just deleting the virtual machine and starting again, just like that. And if for whatever reason you still can't get it to work, um, I want you to go back to the step of converting over to uh, QCAL2 and make sure you probably do that again or even re-download a VHDX file and then convert it from there. So that is about it. My name is Kwaku. I've been at this for almost a month trying to do this thing correctly for video and it's finally, finally working. So hopefully it works better for all of you all, you all versus the previous video. I have other videos on the channel doing things. The next step of what I'm actually going to do. The next big one is going to be probably trying to do it on iOS. So because UTM is supported on iOS, I don't know if it'll work. But if you see a video come out, that means it worked. And I'll show you exactly how to do it jargon list. So stay tuned for that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.